Hi, I'm Marcus with SpeakYourMindMethod.com. So have you ever gone out in public and as soon as you start conversing with people, your stutter starts to rear its proverbial ugly head? Maybe you speak completely fluently when you're by yourself or with your friends or family, but as soon as you go out to socialize with people you're not as familiar with or you're not as comfortable, you just start to stutter again. Well, as someone who has dealt with stuttering for many years, I understand how deflating that feeling is, and I am here to help you overcome your stutter. So in this video, I'm gonna walk you through a five-step process that you will be able to start implementing immediately and to start building your stutter-free life. So the first two steps we'll focus on are more the pre-game stuff, where we're warming ourselves up and we're making sure that we're in a good mental and physical state before we get into the situation. And then in the final three steps, we'll talk about how to deal with, in the moment, those panicky kind of feelings and how to overcome them. Okay, step number one to overcoming panic and to stop stuttering is to relieve unwanted bodily tension. Now, what do most stuttering coaches tell you to do? And more specifically, what do just the general population or your family members or your friends, when they hear you struggle with your stutter, they usually tell you to do what? Relax, right? The problem with that is it's way too low resolution. It's not specific enough and therefore it's not helpful. So what I'm gonna walk you through is just a few very targeted points of relaxation that will really help you to be to feel relaxed and to feel prepared and ready to take on the social situation you're about to walk into. So the two areas of your body that I want you to first really focus on relaxing are your tongue and your feet. I know those seem like very random body parts, but don't worry, there's a point to this and there's an underlying reason for these things. First off, starting with your tongue. Your tongue is the mechanism by which you speak. It's basically your sound is it starts here in your vocal cords and then it goes up through your mouth and your tongue is pretty much connected to all the musculature surrounding your vocal cords and your mouth. And so if your tongue is tight, chances are everything else is also tight and tense. So here's what I want you to try. And yes, this is gonna look silly as hell. So what you wanna do is stick your tongue out as far as you possibly can while massaging underneath your chin. So it looks like this. And you wanna really feel that tongue stretching. And if you do that about three to five times, notice how much your tongue relaxes. So that's the first thing. The next part of your body I want you to really focus relaxation towards is your feet. Now, foot tension is very common among stutters. What do people who stutter often do when they're doing nothing or they're just sitting around? Their foot's doing this, right? It's just like, Gah! we're just always so tense and so anxious all the time, especially in public. And so you want to focus your relaxation on your feet and just sit there for like 30 seconds or a minute and just really tell your feet to relax and even speak as you do it. And notice how good it feels. It feels amazing if you just relax your feet. And so you want to incorporate this into your daily routine, which by the way, and I'll talk about this more later, but I do have my free stop stuttering workshop that you should check out if you really wanna dive deeper into these sorts of things. So I'll leave a link in the description. It's 100% free. So up to this point, we've relieved tongue tension, we've relieved foot tension, and a couple more things you can do to really prepare yourself to go into a social situation is number one is do what are called the seven seven sevens and that is very simply you breathe out on account of seven or no you breathe in to account of seven you hold that breath to account of seven and then you exhale to account of seven so it just looks like right seven 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 an important thing here is when you're holding the breath don't like don't do that. Just kind of let it slowly seep out. Like if some air slowly seeps out, seeps out, that's fine. Just don't like grab onto it and become tense. That's counterproductive to what we're going for here. So do that a few times. And then finally, one more quick exercise that can really help relax your neck and head area is do exaggerated yes and exaggerated no. So it'd be just up like this and all the way down. 
and then this way as well. So those are some exercises to really get rid of unwanted bodily tension, which will really set you up and make it just infinitely more easy once you're in the stressful or social situation. It'll make it so much easier to deal with it and to overcome it. Okay, step two to overcome panic and stop stuttering is to use correct tension distribution. Have you ever wondered why some stutters, when they get angry or they get full of emotion, they actually stop stuttering, their stutter just goes out the window? Why is that? You'd think they would stutter even more, right? Because there's even more tension and more energy and more of a reason to block up. But it's the opposite that happens and they actually, that frees them up. So that tells us there's something we can learn here and I think one of the best ways of describing it is what I'm gonna call tension distribution. See, here's the thing about tension that most speech coaches won't tell you and that is, you need tension to speak. The problem isn't tension. The problem is misplaced tension. Now the bad tension we've already kind of talked about, right? Where you don't want your tongue to be tense. You don't want your feet to be tense. You don't want your neck or your jaw to be tense. You want those parts of your body to be very relaxed. But the truth is there will always be tension involved when you speak. That's the nature of the mechanics of speaking. The key is you need to have all the right tension and all the right places. So a great example of good tension is when you laugh. Next time you laugh, like a real belly laugh, I want you to pay attention to what you feel, like what are the mechanics of what's going on. One is your abdomen, your stomach kind of pushes out, it tenses up, right? <laughs> it has that kind of thing. It's not relaxed. <laughs> You're not doing that. So there's tension there, but isn't that interesting because the sensation we get from laughing is release and relief, not tension. So again, tension will happen. It's just a matter of where is that tension being placed? So there are three places in your body where it's okay to feel some tension when you speak and it's often even advantageous to feel that tension. Number one is your abdomen. You don't want to slouch and be like this and just kind of have that deflate, weak. You need to support your speech and if you any great speaker that you hear speak that you feel compelled when they speak they always have a good energy and good pressure and, and tension coming from their abdomen they speak like this they don't speak like this and in a nonchalant monotone way no you get that energy welling up from the bottom up another place where it can be good to feel some tension is your lips now this one, I haven't ever heard anyone talk about it, but this was a game changer for me. When, and part of this is articulation, because if you're all monotone, your lips are very relaxed. But if you kind of articulate and start to speak in a more articulated manner, like I'm speaking right now, you get that tension on your lips where it's not all loose and blah, 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 right? So, a little bit of tension in your abdomen, feel that support, a little bit of tension on your lips and keep that consistent articulation. And then thirdly, use your hands. Again, tension will occur and sometimes you have more than you would like, especially in a social situation where you're more anxious and you're more stressed. So you might have an excess amount of tension. One of the best ways to allocate that tension and to not let it disrupt your speech is to put it somewhere. And so your hands, like I'm doing right now, your hands when you speak is one of the best ways to direct that tension away from your feet, away from your tongue, away from your throat and your neck. You wanna, because those are the places that will cause you to stutter if you're too tense in those places. So we want to put the tension, again, abdomen, in your lips and in your hands. All right, so now let's transition to step three. So now we're gonna talk about when you're actually in the situation, you feel that stress, you feel that panic kind of just lingering, waiting to pounce on you. How do you deal with that? So step number three here is have crutches on hand. So the concept of crutches was really solidified by Lee Levette in his book, Stuttering and Anxiety Self-Cures, which I also did a review of his book and I'll link to that below. But basically crutches are exactly what they sound like. 
And it's a good metaphor to use because similar to having a broken leg, you need crutches to help that leg heal. It's kind of the same thing where if you have a stutter, you have this, it's kind of broken. Something isn't working correctly in your, the way that you speak and the mechanics that underlie that your speech patterns. And so you need crutches to help you because if you just accept your stutter and just let it run over you and you never try to avoid it and you just let it run its course, that's kind of like walking on a broken leg. It makes the injury even worse because you're reinforcing old habits. So we don't want to do that. So here are a couple examples of crutches you can start practicing right away. The first one is dropping the first letter of the word. Now this trick works really well on longer words, especially longer words that start on a vowel. So if your problem is specifically with vowels or, or words that start with a vowel, this is going to change your life. So take the word assumptions. When you're saying that in a phrase, instead of saying assumptions, you just say, yeah, so those were, were my assumptions. It sounds completely normal, right? I dropped the A. Same thing for like elastic band. You could just say elastic band and just drop the E. And this can even work on consonants. It can start to sound strange if you do it a lot. But again, that's why you have multiple crutches on hand. But also, it's okay if it sounds a bit strange sometimes. Do you know what sounds even more strange? Uh, stuttering. So another word you can try is like complexities. Again, this works best on longer words. So if you say, yeah, it's just all of these complexities are hard to figure out. I dropped the, the C, even though it's a pretty crucial consonant to that word, it's still, everyone knows that you said complexities, you just said complexities. Another crutch you can experiment with is starting your sentences off with more of a whispery tone. So that would be kind of starting like that, right? So whenever you're starting your sentences or even mid sentence to kind of pull, pull back and start moving into that place, right? Where you bring in a bit more airflow, less of that harsh tone and less tension to kind of recalibrate everything, right? So that's another example of a crutch you can use. And finally, I'll just mention one more here in this video, and that is word stretching. This is my favorite one of all, and that sounds like this. So word stretching is exactly that. I'm exactly that. When you stretch your words, it makes you, this is one of those hacks or one of those crutches that sure you can use it as a crutch to help you overcome stuttering, but what's great about it is you never want to stop using it. This is one of the key factors that makes great speakers great speakers is they don't sound monotone. They don't talk like this all the time. No, they stretch their words. They it feels like this elastic band when they talk, right? So you want to get in the habit of stretching your words, which will also help alleviate and beat that habit of always using filler words because this will help slow you down, but in a more precise way. Again, just like I don't like to say, to tell stutters, oh, just relax. I also don't like to say, just slow down. It's too vague, it's too low resolution. We need to be more precise and doing word stretching will, by nature, slow your speech down because you're stretching some of your words. So those are just three crutches. You wanna always have some crutches on hand uh, to avoid those panic blocks from hitting you and to give you some freedom and feeling like, okay, I have some escape routes here. Now, if you wanna dive deeper and you want a step-by-step -step plan to help you overcome your stutter, then what you should do is go watch my 45-minute Stop Stuttering workshop. This is in-depth, and what this will help you do is take your stutter and in six weeks achieve 90% fluency in as little as six weeks. Sometimes it takes longer than that, sometimes it's shorter than that, because oftentimes it's one idea that flips a switch and skyrockets your fluency rate. So I am here to help you as much as I can and that's why I made this workshop. It's 100% free, it is in depth, it's really gonna help you out and this will give you a step-by-step -step routine and a plan to help you overcome your stutter. So I'll leave a link in the description, go check it out.
All right, we got two more steps to go. Number four is act confident even if you don't feel it. When you walk into a room, let's say you're walking into a coffee shop. First, here's what not to do. Do not walk in and then immediately grab your phone and be like, you know, looking down on your phone. It's like, no. What that does, you are telling your brain in that moment that I'm a weak person, I can't stand up to people, I just shrink, right? It's an avoidance behavior, so don't look at your phone. Instead, when you walk into, say, the coffee shop, walk in, shoulders back, chest out, head up. When you walk in the door, make eye contact with a couple people. Just let them know, hey, I'm here. Go to the cash register, order whatever you want to order, and smile as you're doing it. There have been studies done that have proven that by doing these physical behaviors, even if you don't feel it on the inside yet, if, if you put your chest out, you keep your shoulders back, you stand in a very, not authoritative manner, but just a confident manner. You, you walk in, your head's up, you don't shrink and look at your phone, you smile. Whether you feel happy or not, you have to act that way. Because magically what happens is when you start to act that way, you start to feel that way. And this is absolutely crucial and here's why. Without confidence, you will never beat your stutter, ever. You have to be confident even if you don't feel it or you have to act confident even if you don't feel it. Now on this topic, here's another quick tip for you when you're going into a social setting. And I learned this from Ramit Sethi and it's called the 60 second rule. Basically this rule is when you walk into a social setting, you have to go up to somebody and introduce yourself within the first 60 seconds. So within the first minute, go up to somebody, introduce yourself and start a conversation. Again, you're projecting confidence. And even if you stutter, which you will, we always will slip back. You will slip back and fall into your old habits from time to time. At first, maybe a lot, but you still have to remain confident. If you start to stutter, you can't look down and shrink and get all in this kind of weak position. You have to remain confident. And I know that's much easier said than done, but it's the only way. All right, and finally, step number five to overcome panic and beat your stutter is to redirect your attention. This concept is very simple. Focus on the people you're talking to. And people who stutter have this really, really big problem where we're so self-absorbed, not necessarily by choice, it's because we are trying so hard not to stutter and we're trying so hard not to embarrass ourselves and embarrass the other people around us as well because it makes them uncomfortable when we stutter. But it's such a problem because we become so preoccupied with ourselves and our own problems and our own thought processes that we become socially awkward and uninteresting to talk to. So what you want to do is focus intently on two things. The other person, which I just mentioned, and you also want to focus intently on the idea, the feeling, the concept that you are in conversation, that you're talking about. Not the words. Don't think about, oh, okay, I'm going to say this line exactly this way. That is going to lead you back to your stuttering habits. Focus on the big picture. Focus on the emotion. As Lee Levette would say, let your urge do the talking. When you feel that urge to add value to the conversation, let that urge do the talking. Don't pre-plan what the words you're going to use are. Same thing when you're flirting with someone. Don't get preoccupied with the exact words you're going to use. Instead, get in the moment. Focus on the person you're flirting with and focus on how you can affect them and make them laugh. The more you get out of your own head and redirect your attention, redirect your focus from you to the other people and the people you're talking to, as well as the overall ideas and the feeling and letting your urge do the talking, the more you do it, the faster you will be able to overcome your stutter.
So, my friend, those are the five steps to overcome panic and stop stuttering. Now, if you want to dive deeper, then go check out my free Stop Stuttering workshop. This is a step-by-step -step daily routine and a plan that will help you reach 90% fluency in as little as six weeks. It is extremely valuable stuff in here. And again, it's 100% free. Link is in the description, so be sure to check it out. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next video. Talk next time.